So, so far we've been talking about heat transfer processes, which is literally just the movement of heat from one object to another. There is no actual chemical reaction going on because it's like what we've been doing was were metals being dropped in water, and either the water sent energy to the metal or the metal sent energy to the water. It was one of the two things. But no, uh, both substances are the exact same when the reaction's all finished. But now that we want to talk about chemical reactions, we have to bring in the concept of enthalpy. And enthalpy is abbreviated with a capital H. And what enthalpy stands for is the heat formed by a chemical reaction. Okay? And it's going to be in either joules or kilojoules, depending on the problem. You just look at the problem and it'll tell you what you have to do. Now, what we're really looking at more than just the enthalpy, because all chemical substances contain a certain amount of heat within them. And it's that heat that allows the chemical reaction to occur. But what we are going to look at is the overall change in the enthalpy. So whether or not the energy went up or whether or not the energy went down over the course of a chemical reaction. Now, this will be abbreviated with a, cap, uh, with a delta H. Remember, anytime you see delta, delta stands for that change. So delta T was the change in temperature. Delta H will be the change in enthalpy. The way you find it for the chemical reaction is by this little formula. And what this says is this means sum. Okay? So the sum of the enthalpies of all the products minus the sum of all the enthalpies for all the reactants is equal to the overall chemical reaction's enthalpy. So basically, just like in the temperature, when you take the final minus the initial, you get the overall change. Okay? So we are going to look at how much energy does the products have versus how much energy did the reactants have when the reaction got started. If that number, and then we're going to look to see does that number go up or does that number go down. So let's look at an example problem. Consider the following reaction. 2N2 plus O2 yields 2N2O. And it gives me a delta H of 163.2 kilojoules. And the question says, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Okay. So let's break down this situation and then I'll give you the rule. If I take, if I think about this, and I have the products minus the reactants, and that's equal to a positive number, that means that mathematically the products must have been a bigger number than my reactants because when I subtract the two, I have to get a positive value. So if I'm going to do this, that means my products have more heat than my reactants did, which means they gained heat, and when you gain heat, you're absorbing, so heat has went in, and this is an endothermic process. The easier way to do this, oh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase all that so you can hear it again, okay? So in this reaction, it tells me my delta H is a positive value. For my delta H to be a positive value, my products had to have had a greater amount of heat than my reactants did. Since my products gained heat, that means my reaction absorbed the heat, and to absorb heat means you have an endothermic process. So, the easy way to understand it is endo reactions have positive Q's and positive delta H's, and exothermic reactions have negative Q's and negative delta H's. Again, because here this indicates that heat is absorbed, and here it indicates that heat is being released. So my products will have less heat than my reactants. And it's always done final minus initial, so products minus reactants. Now let's apply this a little bit more. Same chemical reaction, but here's part B. Calculate the amount of heat transferred when 25 grams of N2O forms by this chemical reaction. Here's how you do this. This number here comes out of this chemical reaction. Okay? So this 163.2 comes out every time two moles of N2 react, one mole of O2 reacts, or two moles of N2O are produced. So the reaction asks, however, what happens when 25 grams is formed by this chemical reaction? Well, since I'm talking about in terms of N2O, I'm going to put the coefficient for N2O underneath my 163.2, because my 163.2 comes is absorbed every time two moles of N2O are formed. This question wants to know how much heat will be absorbed when 25 grams react. Now I can't use the grams here because I use the moles from the coefficient from the chemical reaction. So I'm going to quick do a mole conversion.
one mole of any substance is equal to the weight from the periodic table. And so you've got uh, 14.01 plus 14.01 plus 16.01 is 44, okay, 16, is 44.02 grams. Pull out your handy dandy calculator. Okay, so we've got 25 divided by 44.02 is 0.568 and this is for N2O so this number is going to come up in here okay because again basically there is no actual formula to set this up it's just a ratio but basically what you're going to have is you have the delta H of your reaction over the coefficients are equal to the heat that you're looking for from the reaction from the actual number of moles used. Okay, So you can kind of use this little, I don't know, Siegel formula, you guess you could call it. This is something, just a ratio that I'm setting up. And so the delta H from my reaction over the coefficient from the chemical reaction is equal to the heat produced from that, or absorbed from that number of moles. So I cross multiply and I solve for x. Go back to my calculator. And so I have my moles times 163.2 divided by 2 is 46.3 kilojoules. And the reason I know here it's kilojoules is because it, that's the way it was given in the problem. Okay? So again, so what this is telling me is in a perfect situation, 163.2 kilojoules is going to be absorbed for 2 moles. But since I only have 0.568 moles, only 46.3 kilojoules is actually used. Okay, now part C. How many grams of nitrogen gas must react to produce an enthalpy change of 5 kilojoules? Process is the same here. Okay, you're setting up a ratio. So 163.2 over. Now this time I'm talking about nitrogen. So I do the, for the coefficient of nitrogen. It says that my enthalpy change is 5 kilojoules. So I'm only going to put in 5 here as my heat. And I'm going to solve for moles. And the reason I'm going to solve for moles is the question does ask for grams. And I know that if I have moles, I can find grams. Okay, so again, cross multiply. 2 times 5 is obviously 10. Divided by 163.2 is 0 0.0613. moles of nitrogen, okay? But that's not my answer. The question asks for grams, so I do a quick mole conversion. One mole on the bottom, 28.02 grams on the top. I go back to my handy dandy calculator, multiply this by 28.02, and I get 1.72 grams of nitrogen. So only 1.72 grams of nitrogen is needed to produce this uh, level of heat in this type of chemical reaction. Okay, last one. How many kilojoules of heat are produced when 10 grams of N2O is decomposed into N2 and O2 at constant pressure? Now hopefully there's something in this chemical reaction that kind of jumps off the page at you. And that's this phrase here. Decomposition, now we have to go way back to November. Decomposition is when one substance breaks down into two or more substances. Well, this is not a decomposition reaction, okay? So I have to flip this. Because if I turn this reaction around and I make it go in the other direction, it is a decomposition reaction, okay? So now this is decomposition. But here's the thing, my heat's gonna change because if it's endothermic in one direction, it can't be endothermic in the other direction. Because endo and exo are always opposites, if it's endo in one direction, it must be exo in the other direction. So whatever I do to my chemical reaction, I do to my delta H. Since I flipped the chemical reaction, I'm going to flip the sign of delta H. So now, the, the process is exactly the same. 163.2, negative 163.2. It's talking about N2O, so I put two N2Os is equal to how many kilojoules of heat, x, over, and then it says 10 grams. So I've got to convert my 10 grams of N2O, 
44.02 grams. That goes back to that part B that I just pulled that from. 10 divided by 44.02 is 0.227. So that comes up in here. Cross multiply and solve. So I've got my moles times negative 163.2 divided by 2 is negative 18.5 kilojoules. So that means 18.5 kilojoules can, is being released. So I can um, produce. So I can either say 18.5 kilojoules produced. The produced indicates the negative sign, or I could say the reaction has a delta H of negative 18.5 kilojoules. Either for either or. Okay. So. It doesn't matter how you phrase. You can just circle the box, circle the answer like I just did, or you can actually write things like 18.5 kilojoules is produced in the chemical reaction, and the word produced indicates the sign. And again, this sign tells me that it's exothermic. Now, that's the easy way of solving enthalpy when you have varying amounts of grams or moles from your chemical reaction. In the next podcast, we'll start talking about Hess's Law, and Hess's Law will, ha will talk about what happens when you have multiple chemical reactions.